Hey Grubby followers, some news tonight about Frost Giant. Uh, several years ago, the members of Team 1 that worked at Blizzard left Blizzard because they had no new hope for another RTS coming out from Blizzard the company. Since then, we have seen some mobile game reveals like Diablo Immortal and Warcraft Arclight Rumble, but no major new PC titles coming. And so they decided to set out on their own to develop another RTS that is meant to be the spiritual successor of StarCraft 2 and games like Warcraft 3. Frost Giant it has just released their cinematic trailer and we can watch it together now. Signal's breaking up. Command, I'll do one last scan. See you soon. Over. Okay, hurry. Command, I may be onto something. Looks pretty good. This looks really nice. I have it, Command. Repeat, I have it. Mission accomplished. Oh, a bell rock. Fly your fools. Nice shield. Air support. Hang tight, Doc. I've got this. Could make it. We gotta move now. Glad you Okay, so she got Hell's the Hell's coming with it. Hell's coming with it. She got the cool uh, magical shield. It was quite strong. Stormgate. I like the name. What do you guys think? So that was Stormgate. Uh, Stormgate was made by explicit leaders and they raised a bunch of money. Uh, this is one of the news. I think they raised more uh, since then, actually. So that's that's pretty cool. Frost Giant coming up with uh, their new game reveal. Now, um, I, had a, I had some private looks at some of the material that they are planning for the game. And I thought it would be cool to go over something that where they answered some questions from Reddit. This is from the latest Frost Giant newsletter. And I have someone else reading it out so that I can react to it. Next design discussion approaches to game launch. Like so the reason I think this is interesting to talk specifically about game launch is, uh, is this gonna be like a sell once, own forever game? Is it gonna be like Diablo Immortal where you, it's free to play, but you could spend your life savings on it, uh, or or differently. So let's check By it Cameron out. By Cameron McGinn, Community Manager, and Gerald Valoria, Communications Director. The way in which games are developed and released has changed a lot over the years. Several distinct approaches to launching and supporting a game with post-release content have emerged over time. Yeah. We'd like to discuss some of the more common models and get your perspective on them as a player. 
the old school box model. Launching a game with a single primary content release is about as close to the old standard of physical boxes lining store shelves as it gets. Yeah, that's how they used to Remember do it. Those? Some of us miss those boxes and the goodies inside, like art books, mouse pads, and cloth maps. Having a physical connection to the game feels great, and it's easier to display a box on your bookshelf than a digital game key. The main advantage of this approach, whether it's physical or digital, is that a lot of content is released right away. From a player perspective this usually feels great, like binge-watching an entire season of a television show. Yeah, that makes sense. The drawback is the time and costs of developing the entirety of a game up front, not accounting for any post-launch content plans. You also typically have longer gaps between future updates, with those usually coming in the form of expansion packs, DLC, and season passes. Yeah, I like this system. The game as a service approach. The game as a service model, which you've seen in games like League of Legends, is a common choice for modern game development. This typically means an initially smaller scope of content at launch, with more content released at regular intervals afterwards. This is nice too. The advantage of this approach is that additional content releases can be continually improved and adapted to player feedback. Regular updates also keep things fresh, giving old players a reason to keep coming back and new players a reason to get started. Yeah, that's really good. I... oh. <laughs> I have to switch to a worse voice. Uh, the other voices aren't as good. If I like this and I'll use it more, maybe I'll look into that. We'll get some worse voice now, let's go on. With service style releases, the smaller launch scope can in... With service style releases, the smaller launch scope can enable a tighter focus <laughs> for the development team, increasing the quality of the team's work. These factors have the added benefit of making a free-to-play model possible. Yeah. Early access. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a nice system too. Personally, I quite like this. I've played games that uh, are similar to this, where it's free-to-play, but then they sell you content as it's released, and you're never really suckered into buying anything you didn't intend you like the content, therefore you buy it. Um, and it's it's pretty good for both fans and content creators because there's like new story beats coming out, new like content drops. I like it. Early access. In either scenario, giving players early access to a game is an option many developers choose to pursue for different reasons. Yeah, what do you guys think of, uh, of early access? Let me know in the YouTube comments below. I've played some games where I was very interested in them and the response of the game was generally quite good. I liked it. I played early access and then as the development continued, and this could take anywhere from like a year to two years, the game just kind of dropped off my radar and I already feel like I kind of played and finished it. Even though obviously I didn't, I just played a couple of hours. Uh, one example for instance is Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3 was fairly well received because it looked good and had an interesting story and, and good voice acting and very good graphics. Certainly better than most of the graphics of games that I play. And I really enjoyed it, but because it was early access you could only play a small part of the story, which by the way I didn't entirely finish. I played it for like two days. Uh, and, and apparently now it's still not fully released and I feel like this is years ago that I played the early access and I'm not really looking at it anymore and I still don't know in my heart of hearts whether I'm going to be going back to Baldur's Gate 3 and playing it. So wh what do you guys think of early access? Nice, uh, you get to watch streamers play it and then get some kind of decision making whether you think this is a game that you might want to buy and play or do you feel like it kind of ruins the opening a present at Christmas and now you already know what it is two years in advance. What do you think? Or maybe another opinion. In either scenario, giving players early access to a game is an option many developers choose to pursue for different reasons. Yeah. Some players love the idea of early access and being able to help shape a game's future by providing meaningful feedback to its developers. Others strongly dislike playing an unfinished game. By allowing access to a game early, developers are able to test and polish features still in development incorporating feedback Here. and data gathered from the players. It's like we're there QA. This exposure to real players early on makes features stronger before a wider release. That's true, we, we help them test the game and it makes it better, right? Early access also helps increase a game's visibility and provides a glimpse of its overall direction to those who participate. On the other hand, some early access games feel partially finished. That's part of the problem, isn't it? But I mean, it's kind of hand in hand. If you say that it makes features stronger before a wider release, then doesn't it go hand in hand that the game is also partially finished? On the other hand, distinct... 
On the other hand, some early access games feel partially finished, despite being sold at full price, yeah. which never feels good and damages the game's reputation. I feel like to a degree Age of Empires 4 is kind of like this, isn't it? Uh, I don't know if you guys here on this channel are still following my Age of Empires content on my third YouTube channel, Grubby AoE. You can see the link if you scroll in my uh, YouTube main page. But uh, we're, we're just getting a season two patch uh, soon this month and it's six, seven, no, it's eight months into the game's life. And I feel like we're almost getting to a point where I would call it release ready. Release ready. And that will stop, probably still take another four months or so. So I'd say like a year on after AOE 4's release, it's release ready. But sadly, it also already missed out on a bunch of the hype. So whatever game is coming out, if I'm gonna be very interested in it and I wanna be playing it long term, I would want the best for that game, right? Because that's also the best for all of us and for me, that this game is respecting our time into it and that this game is ready when we are first playing it and that it's fun and it's only going to get better and it doesn't squander some of the release hype that the game uh, built up from the release but then lost it because people lost interest due to a variety of different reasons. You know, sometimes people ask what went wrong with Reforged what went wrong with Heroes of the Storm? Why aren't they bigger than they are? Because, you know, really fun games. And it's never really one reason, isn't it? It's always a big combination of different factors where it's a lot of little things, a different reason for many different people, but altogether, it's a drop in the player base. And that has a tendency to lead to self-cannibalization where it just gets worse and worse. Dead game meme and shoes. However, I still think it's impressive that both Reforged Warcraft 3 Let's call it Warcraft 3 Reforged. Did something for us, but let's call it Warcraft 3. Uh, that both Warcraft 3 and Heroes of the Storm are still going strong. That I can still get very quick queue matching and get a lot of good games and a lot of game enjoyment out of both of these games. But it could have been worse. And games that aren't as veteran, that haven't been out for as long, that didn't have the old Blizzard reputation, they may not have the same luxury of uh, surviving past squandering the hype so if stormgate is going to be a game worth playing long term and i'm definitely looking at it then i hope that uh, they don't squander initial game release hype on the other hand some early access games feel partial if distinguishing between early access and a game's actual launch has also become difficult yeah. with some games remaining in a perpetual state of early access or beta for years heroes of the storm for instance was in beta for years before it was considered released Distinguishing between... So what is Frost Giant thinking? Yeah. Our approach to launch and future content updates must support our goals first and foremost being to create the next great real-time strategy game. We also think part of making a great game means making sure the development team can enjoy a healthy work-life balance. The choices we make now must sustain ongoing development in a way that allows our game, team, and community to thrive for years to come. Let's hope so. Back when some of us were working on StarCraft 2, we transitioned the game from a box model to a free-to-play game as a service model. This had a strong net positive Co impact commanders. on the health of the game and our player base not only did new players join the game as a result, but many of them stuck around. We are considering a similar approach with our upcoming game, which would include a defined early access period to help us polish features and set expectations before our version 1.0 is completed. We then aim to release a consistent drumbeat of new story and gameplay updates to keep players excited and the game fresh. We think this could be the best approach for our game, team, and community, but we're eager to get your feedback. Okay, okay, that's uh, that's really interesting, and uh, let's let's see how that plays out. Now, uh, uh, Stormgate just released their trailer, and there'll be more news on Sunday as well. I will try to set up an interview with uh, with some developer uh, or yeah with, with a developer from Frost Giant. Hopefully, I can get them on my stream and do a video for YouTube. And I've got a lot of questions there. I, I know you guys are going to be having a lot of questions. And make sure to write them in the comments that I can make sure to ask them to them. There's a couple of things I do know already. They're really trying to make this into a proper one-on-one -on -one competitive RTS. The question is always, will they succeed, right? Uh, but they are developers that worked on SC2, and we will check out the game together, and we'll see whether we like it and whether it is replayable and competitive to that degree. 
but their goal, um, they had a, there was a question in a Q&A where they were asked, on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being SC2, and uh, being a scale of how hard it is to play, uh, or let's say, no, how high the skill ceiling is. That was the question. With the skill ceiling of StarCraft 2 being a 10, and I think most people agree on this, that SC2 is uh, having a very high skill ceiling because of the mechanical requirements, the high game speed. Um, they said a 10. Now, that, uh, that is exactly what pro players or ex-pro players like me want to hear, but they are also very cognizant uh, to the fact that not everyone wants to play the game in that much of an intense and try-hard manner. And therefore, they are coming out with two major game modes. There's the one-on-one -on -one where there will be a different uh, balance or design, let's say, than the other major game mode that they will be releasing which, with, which is 3v3. There'll be a 3v3 multiplayer mode that will feel a lot more like, I guess, Warcraft 3 4 on 4 or, or let, let's say a MOBA. It's still an RTS and you're still playing the same game, but it is more for the casual player. Though, who knows? Maybe the pros will also be preferring 3-on-3 three three, and there'll be loads of 3-on-3 three three tournaments uh, for that instead. That remains to be seen. And then here's something that people that remember the Heroes of the Storm brawl uh, escape from Braxis may like and remember. Uh, that was a very popular brawl game mode for a short period of time in HOTS. They're also coming out with a 3VE, so three versus environment, where there will be heroes and leveling up and abilities and units, and the three of you strategically play RTS together against AI as you advance in stories and advance through different levels. So I think that's really cool. There's a lot of potential here. There's a lot of talent here. Let's uh, continue to cover what's going to be happening and make sure to let me know any questions for the devs and what you think about some of the topics discussed in this video. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give a sub to my channel, sign up for notifications, and always like and comment and subscribe. Thank you so much and see you next.